Welcome to our lecture online. Now here is a really interesting problem. We're trying to find the surface area of an ellipsoid. And when I started this problem, because I worked it out in my notes before, just to make sure I knew how to do it, um, I always wondered how, how do they come up with the surface area of an ellipsoid. And here's a really good method to do it. We use the surface of revolution method. And notice that we have, basically it's like an egg, right? And the edge of that, that would be the arc length, and is defined by the equation x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. And a and b are not equal to one another. Matter in this case, b is smaller than a, necessarily, to work this out. And notice that we're then going to integrate these sections, right? What we do here is we get a small little dl, and we're going to revolve it around the x-axis. And so we end up with a little strip, that's a dA, and that strip will have the area 2 pi times the radius. The radius here is going to be defined by f of x. Notice there's a 2 in front of it because this only gives you the top half and you want the bottom half as well. So you need to multiply times 2. The limits of integration will be from x equals 0 to x equals a. And um, then, of course, we need to have the equation for the arc length which is the square root of 1 plus the derivative of the function squared times dx. So first what we need to do is we need to take this equation and turn it into a function of x, right? So f of x. And so we first isolate the x and the y's, y on one side, x on the other side. Uh, we move the b square up. So now we have y square equals b square times 1 minus x square over a square. Uh, let's see here. Then what we do here is we get the common denominator of a square, so we end up with a square minus x squared in the numerator, and the a square can be factored out. Then you take the square root, you have y equals b of a, b over a times the square root of a square minus x squared. And now that is your function of x, that's what we need right here for the radius of the ellipsoid. And then you take the derivative, which is equal to this, simplified and then we take the derivative squared of course we remember how to do that because that's what we need to find the arc length of the edge of that ellipsoid which then is rotated about the x-axis so here we end up with the equation notice again the two comes out uh, the two the two is needed because we're going to only get the top half of this and we need the bottom half as well all right, now this is not a particularly easy problem. There's a lot of algebra involved in it, and it may take more than this board to cover it, and so we may kind of stop halfway in between and then continue on the next one when we have more board space. So let's plug everything in and see what we end up with. The area is equal to four pi times the integral from x equals zero to a. Now in this case, yeah, we'll just do it in general terms. A, f of x f of x is right here. So we end up with b over a times the quantity a squared minus x squared to the one half power. Times the square root of one plus the derivative squared, which gives us b squared x squared over a squared times a squared minus x squared Oof. and then times dx so notice it looks pretty bad so what should we do next well first of all what I see here is I see in the numerator an a squared minus x squared to the one half power and essentially have that in the denominator as well of course if I do if I finish the parentheses there and so I'm looking to cancel these out to do that I need a common denominator inside the radical so then I can write this as a is equal to 4 pi times integral from 0 to a b over a times a squared minus x squared to the 1 half power and then here we have a squared times a squared minus x squared plus b squared x squared all divided by the common denominator now is a squared times a squared minus x squared and the whole thing is the one half power times dx all right so now the reason why we wanted to do that and where's my red pen right here because we wanted to cancel this with 
this. This is to the one-half power, this is the denominator to the one-half power, so they cancel out. So now we have an a squared in the denominator by itself. I can go ahead, that's inside the radical, so I can go ahead and factor that out and make this an a squared. And I can multiply what I have in the numerator and then see what we end up with. So next we have a is equal to 4 pi times b, I'll take the b out, that's a constant, a times this a because it's a squared to the one-half power, so multiply these together, I end up with a squared in the denominator, times the integral from 0 to a, and then what we have left, I'm going to multiply everything out. So here we have the square root of a to the fourth minus a squared x squared plus b squared x squared and times dx. So now I'm trying to get something in the form where we have, you know, something like um, a squared minus u squared or something like that. The difference between two squares, one of them being the variable inside a radical because I know how to integrate that. So to make it look like that, I need to combine these two here and make it look like this. So let's try that. a equals 4 pi b over a squared times the integral from 0 to a times the square root of a to the fourth minus a squared minus b squared times x squared times dx. All right, so what's the next trick here? The next trick is turn this into an a squared. To do that, we have to divide by an a squared. So we have to divide both terms by a squared and multiply times a squared. Of course, when we take outside the radical, that becomes an a. So the next thing I'm going to do is this. I'm going to do this. Make this a little bit longer. I'm going to divide everything by an a squared. So divide this by a squared. Divide this by a squared. And of course, when I do that, I have to multiply by a squared, but I'm going to take that outside the radical and put an a there. There we go. That's the trick. So there's a mathematical trick here to keep going. And then, of course, this a cancels out with one of those a's. So let's see what we have left when we do that. So now we have the area is equal to 4 pi b over a times the integral from 0 to a of the square root of a squared minus a squared minus b squared over a squared times x squared dx. Now we need to make a substitution. We take this whole thing right here and we make that into another constant. So we're going to let c squared equals this quantity right here. So that's going to be a squared minus b squared over a squared. And when we substitute, we get the following. We get a is equal to 4 pi b over a times the integral from 0 to a of the quantity a squared minus c squared x squared times dx. And so now you begin to see that uh, things are looking better. So what we need to do now is turned into something squared minus something else squared minus x squared without the c squared there. So we can do that by factoring out a c squared. So let's try that. So that means that we have a is equal to 4 pi b over a times the integral from 0 to a now, if I factor out a c squared, that becomes a c, so times c times the square root of, and now this becomes a squared over c squared, minus x squared dx. So now I have something where I have some constant squared minus x squared. Now, to make it a little bit easier to work with, let's make the substitution, let d equals a over c, or d squared is a squared over c squared. 
and substitute that in here, and so end up with a is equal to 4 pi b c over a times the integral from 0 to a of the square root of d squared minus x squared dx. And that we know how to integrate. If you don't know how to integrate it, you can look up a table of integrals. But uh, now that I'm out of board space, let's call this part one. And then we'll erase part of the board and continue and make that then our next video. We're close to finding the surface area of an ellipsoid.